is Dr. Klein. We're going to demonstrate how to do a beak trim today on a uh, minor beak canal occlusion on this budgie named Merlin, this cute little guy. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is opening up the cage. We're going to gather him up. Now this part's relatively simple. Merlin's a pretty good little birdie. Come here, buddy. So we can just gently kind of pick him up, but for the beak trim, I will want to swaddle him and have a little bit more support just so he's not as wiggly. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have an assistant wrap him up in a washcloth. What we're going to do is gently use our thumb and forefinger to gently cradle underneath his jawbone. So you can see here's Christian's forefinger, here's his thumb, and then Merlin's cute little head is right here. So this is the position I'm going to want us to be holding him in while we do the beak trim. An important thing to note is that you cannot uh, crush a bird's neck. You can't squeeze their neck too hard to um, allow them to suffocate, but you can do that if you press too hard on their chest. So the important thing, we can see that Christian is holding only around the neck and supporting the back while leaving his little chest open. So with that being said, we're going to begin with the trimming portion. So an interesting thing about avian beaks is that there's a lot of mobility to the top beak, or the uh, we call that the nath or the rhinotheca. This can be pushed down with a finger so that you have easy access to this little overgrown portion on the mandible or the lower beak. So what I'm going to be doing, here pause, start with the bottom beak, and with this one we're going to use common nail clippers. So it's probably the smaller the better. Since his beak is relatively straight across and overgrown in an even way. This is the only reason why we're using something like this. Otherwise, these tools tend to be kind of unwieldy for managing bird beaks. So what we're going to do, I use this uh, Q-tip, and any Q-tip will do. This just happens to be a bit of a longer one. And we're going to use this as a protector to make sure the tongue and the top beak don't get in the way of our clipper. So I'm going to go ahead and push the top beak in with a little bit of wood, and then we can see that I have this bottom beak easily accessible. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and push the beak in, and you can use your finger for this too, and push the beak down like that. And what we're going to be aiming for is where this little clear line ends. So if you can see, right about here, there's a difference between kind of a light colored beak and where it gets a little bit darker. We're going to try to cut right above where it gets a little bit darker. So this means his beak is going to be still a eensy bit long, but what we want to make sure we avoid is making him bleed since the beak does have a blood supply the closer you get to the jaw. So we have to be careful about this. So I'm positioning my clippers right above that little line and we clip. So right now we can see that there's a little bit more space for us to do, but we got a lot of it. So if we, need to if we need to trim it up just a little bit more, I place it right where that little chip is, and clip. And now we can see there's one little fragment there, so we're going to go one more, a little bit over to our right, his left, and clip that piece. And there we go. And now he's hiding his little face. But that's about what we're going to be looking for. Now, this is where the nail file comes in. So for the bottom beak, we're going to do that same thing where we push the top beak down and we're going to run it across just to smooth it out, make it a little bit less jagged, a bit more comfortable for him. We're going to try to avoid rubbing on the top of the beak. Now, if you get, if you do rub on the top of the beak a little bit, it's okay. Then what we're going to do is push the bottom beak in. And if we have some overgrowth on the top and his top beak truthfully is a little bit short, but we will need to keep it trimmed over time. I do a little bit of a diagonal pattern. A couple on this side, a couple on this side, and just make sure that's not too pointy. So the thing we're shooting for on this top beak is we want it to end right where this little triangle of the beak ends, right about here. So we're right about in the right place. Now we're about done with the beak trim. Now the thing we're noticing, he's a little bit upset with us. Breathing kind of heavy, we can see his little tongue moving around inside his mouth. So when we see this, that means you should put him back and let him rest. I usually give him about five minutes before messing with him again. But overall, this process can be pretty simple. Now the last thing is, if there's any bleeding or um, redness, swelling, pain, any time that you're concerned, 
that perhaps we've gone a little bit too far, what we can use at home is a bit of cornstarch or we can use flour. You can also use styptic powder, which is the type of powder they use for dog and cat nails. When they start bleeding, the same thing works for birds and it's safe even on the beak. Thank you for watching my video.